Hi friends, it's Mrs. Tucker. Today's story is lesson nine in unit two of our journeys book. And again, it's one of my favorite stories. I really enjoy this story. This one is called How Chipmunk Got His Stripes. And it's by Joseph Bruchak and James Bruchak. And I'll talk about who they are in just a minute, little bit. Our illustrations are by Jose Aguero and um, Ariane Dewey. So let's meet our two authors. You'll notice they have the same last name, Bruchak. Joseph Bruchak and James Bruchak. As a boy, Joseph Bruchak listened to his grandfather tell stories of their Native American heritage. Joseph passed these stories down to his son, James. Now, this father and son team writes books together, such as Raccoon's Last, Last Race. And we have two illustrators for this book, Jose Aguergo and Ariane Dewey. And it says, these two artists make a great team. When they're working on a book, Jose Aguero, a Arego first draws the lines for the characters using pen and ink, and then Ariane Dewey paints the colors. In this way, they have illustrated more than 60 books. Now, this is a totally different kind of genre or type of book than what we have read so far. This kind of story is a folk tale. And so a folk tale is a kind of traditional tale, meaning a traditional story. So usually it's a story that was passed down from grandfather to father to son or from your grandparents to your parents to you or even your grandparents' parents, your great-great-grandparents. This is a story that's been passed down through families for years and years and years. And so a lot of the times these stories have a very simple plot or a very simple story that t teaches a lesson. Okay, so there's a reason why this story was created or this story was told, and it's usually to teach you something at the very end. And we'll talk about that as we go through these, this story for the next few days. And also, a lot of times these stories were animal characters, and the animal characters talk and act just like people. So a folktale is a make-believe story because the animals obviously are not going to really talk and act like people, but they do act out things that people might say or might do. Now, the essential question for our story today is how can stories help you learn a lesson? And so we'll talk about that as we go through the story for the next few days so that we can realize why we read folktales and what they do for us. One autumn day long ago, Bear was out walking as he walked, he began to brag. I am Bear. I am the biggest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am the strongest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am the loudest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am Bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can. As soon as Bear said those words, a little voice spoke up from the ground. Can you really do anything? Bear looked down. He saw a little brown squirrel standing on his hind legs. Can you really do anything? Brown squirrel asked, ag asked again. Bear stood up very tall. I am Bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can. Can you tell the sun not to rise tomorrow morning? Brown Squirrel asked. I have never tried that before, but I am Bear. I can do that. Yes, I can. Bear turned west to face the sun. It was the time when the sun always goes down. Bear stood up to his full height and spoke in a loud voice. Sun, do not come up tomorrow. At his words, the sun began to disappear behind the hills. You see, Bear said, Sun is afraid of me. He is running away. But will the sun come up tomorrow? Brown Squirrel asked. No, Bear answered. The sun will not come up. Then Bear turned to face east, the direction where the sun always used to come up. He sat down. Little Brown Squirrel sat down beside him. All that night they did not sleep. All that night Bear kept saying these words. The sun will not come up. The sun will not come up. But as the night went on, Little Brown Squirrel began to say something too. He said these words. 
The sun is going to rise, ooh! The sun is going to rise, ooh! All through the night they sat there. One by one, other animals gathered around them. Fox and wolf, deer and moose, rabbit and porcupine, hawk and owl, otter and beaver, frog and turtle, and even little mice came. They wanted to see who would be right, bear or brown squirrel. This is what the other animals heard. The sun will not come up, woof. The sun is going to rise, ooh. The sun will not come up, woof. The sun is going to rise, ooh. Finally, it was just before dawn, the time when the sun always used to come up. Look, said Turtle, a little bit of red is starting to show. Yes, said Owl, I believe the sun will rise today. Bear only chanted louder. The sun will not come up. Oof. But right next to him, Little Brown Squirrel piped up. The sun is going to rise. Oh. And the sun came up. The birds sang their welcoming songs. The bright light of the new day spread over the land. Everyone was happy except for one animal. That animal was Bear. He sat there with his head down and a grumpy look on his face. The happiest animal of all was Little Brown Squirrel. The sun came up, he chirped. The sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up. Brown Squirrel was so happy, he forgot what his wise old grandmother had told him when he was very young. Brown Squirrel, his grandmother had said, it is good to be right about something. But when someone else is wrong, it is not a good idea to tease him. Now, Little Brown Squirrel began to tease Bear. Bear is foolish, the sun came up. Bear is silly, the sun came up. Bear is stupid, the sun... Whomp! Bear's big paw came down on Little Brown Squirrel, pinning him to the ground. Bear leaned over and opened his huge mouth. Yes! Bear growled. The sun did come up. Yes, I do look foolish, but you will not live to see another sunrise. You will not ever tease anyone else again because I, Bear, am going to eat you. Brown Squirrel thought fast. You are right to eat me, he said. I was wrong to tease you. I would like to say I am sorry before you eat me, but you are pressing down on me so hard that I cannot say anything. I cannot say anything at all. I cannot even breathe. If you would lift up your paw just a little bit, then I could take a deep breath and apologize before you eat me. That is a good idea, Bear said. I would like to hear you apologize before I eat you. So Bear lifted up his paw, but instead of apologizing, Brown Squirrel ran. He ran as fast as he could toward the pile of stones where he had his home. He had a tunnel under those stones and a nice warm burrow underground. Little Brown Squirrel's grandmother stood there in the door waiting for him. Hurry, Brown Squirrel, she called. Hurry, hurry. Little Brown Squirrel dove for the door to his home, but Bear was faster than he looked. He grabbed for Little Brown Squirrel with his big, his big paw. Bear's long, sharp claws scratched Brown Squirrel's back from the top of his head to the tip of his tail. But Brown Squirrel got away. Deep down in his burrow, where Bear couldn't get him, Brown Squirrel curled up next to his grandmother and slept all winter while those scratches on his back healed. When spring came again, Little Brown Squirrel came out of his hole and looked at himself. There were long, pale stripes all the way down his back where Bear had scratched him. He was Brown Squirrel no longer. He was now Chipmunk, the striped one. That is how Chipmunk got his stripes. Ever since then, Chipmunk has been the first animal to get up every morning. As the sun rises, he scoots to the top of the tallest tree to sing his song. The sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up. And ever since then, 
bear has been the last animal to get up. He doesn't like to hear Chipmunk's song. It reminds him, as it reminds us all, that no one, not even Bear, can do everything. Well, that's our story for today, friends. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to go back and listen to it again, by all means, go back and play this video again. Otherwise, I will be talking to you again soon. Bye!